Hello. In this Java tutorial, we're going to be learning about methods. Methods are blocks of code that can be called from another part of the program. If you have a piece of code you're going to use over and over again, it makes sense to put it in a method so you don't have to rewrite it in different parts of your program. Methods may have parameters, which are a type of variable that allow us to pass data to them. Methods may return information to the part of the program that called them. For a method with a void return type, a return statement is optional. However, for a method with any other return type, it must return a piece of data of the correct type. Methods end as soon as they reach a return statement, even if there is more code in the method. Let's start by writing a simple method. We always have to have methods inside a class. However, for the sake of saving space, we're not going to put the class code at the top and the bottom. We start by writing our main method. The main method always has to be written like this, public static void main string args. A main method is the only method that will run automatically when a program is run. Now let's write a second method. This method, public static int, it's int, so that means we have to return a piece of data of int type. I've named it add two nums, and I've given it two parameters, which are a type of variable that allows the method to accept data when it is called. We can use these parameters to customize the behavior of the method. In this case, we're going to add num1 and num2 and put them inside a variable called total. Then we're going to return total. Here is a command that calls the method. We see that this call has two arguments. These arguments get passed to the parameters in the method. The number and type of arguments have to match the number and type of parameters in the method that it is calling. When we call this method and pass the arguments 5 and 3, it's going to add 5 plus 3 together and return the total, which is 8. However, we're not doing anything with the data that's returned, so it just disappears into the ether. It might make sense to do something like this instead. Here, we're taking the data that gets returned and putting it into a new variable called sum that we can use later. Now let's look at another method. This one is to take an average of two numbers. We've named our parameters int num a and int num b. We're going to use the add two nums method because if you want to take an average, first you need to add two numbers together. Instead of rewriting the code, I'm just calling add two nums, passing the data that was passed to us here, and then dividing whatever the result of add two numbers by two so I have the average. Next, I'm going to create a variable in the main method, avg, and set it equal to a call of the method average of 2 with the two arguments 7 and 5. Now I'm going to write a third method. This method is a void type method, so a return statement is optional. We have one parameter, num3, and it's going to print out the string average is and then concatenate that string with the value in the variable num3. Here, we call the method print average and pass it the data inside the variable avg. avg is not being passed, but the stack data inside avg is. Next, we're going to trace out the code. All these variables are primitive type variables, so the only data will be stored on the stack. You will see variables appearing and disappearing on the stack as they are created and destroyed. You'll also see variables grayed out as they move out of scope and then turn black again as they move back into scope. To understand better how and why this works, click on the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen to a video called Scope and Lifetime of Variables. We'll start here. We create the variable sum on the stack and then we call the method add two nums and pass it the arguments 5 and 3. These 5 and 3 get passed to the parameters num1 and num2, and they're created on the stack here. Next, we create the variable total and set it equal to num1 plus num2, 
5 plus 3 equals 8. Finally, we return total. Total is 8, so it takes the place of this add two nums 5, 3. Finally, we set the return of 8 equal to sum. Next, we're going to create the variable on the stack, avg, and set it equal to whatever is returned by average of 2 when we pass it the arguments 7 and 5. The variables go to these parameters, num a and num b. Next, we have to call add two nums and pass it the 5 and the 7. The 5 and the 7 go into the parameters of add two nums, and we can see it on the stack right here. Next, we create this local variable total, set it equal to num1 plus num2, 7 plus 5 equals 12. Then we return the data inside the variable total, and it goes here. Next, we have to do this division, 12 divided by 2, and that gives us the average, which is 6. Now we'll return that 6 to where it was called. Average will get set to equal 6, and it's placed right here on the stack. Finally, we're going to call the method printAverage and pass it whatever value is inside the variable avg. The number 6 gets passed to the parameter num3, and that gets created on the stack. Next, we call system out print line. We concatenate the string literal average is with the data inside the variable num3, so we get average is 6. Some final information on methods. A method can have multiple return statements, but only one is activated every time the method is run. Depending on the flow of the program, one return statement may be used once, and another one may be used another time. You must have the same number, type, and order of arguments as you do for parameters. The arguments must match the parameters. For further reading, please check out this website or type Methods Java Oracle into Google and choose the first result. To see the next video in the sequence, please click on the video link in the lower left hand corner of the screen. To see the entire sequence, please click on the video link in the lower right hand corner of the screen.